Elevator Pitch presents Eddie Spade and the Lone Bandit, Part 1, written by Anne C. Teach that son of a bitch. He dead? Yes, Sheriff. Good. Get the Undertaker and a shovel. We might not need any new sheriffs for a while with this one six feet under. You know what, Doc? I think the bullet in the head improves the look of this ugly son of a bitch. It's certainly not a pleasant wound. Certainly not anything I'd be able to fix even in all my years as town doctor. Then good thing you ain't got to deal with it, old man. I'll be yelling at Deputy Murphy for something if you need me. Kid can't tell his goddamn head from his ass. Well, howdy there, Miss Harper. Happy to see you, too. What did I tell you about dueling out here, Deputy Spade? That's Sheriff Spade to you, ma'am. I don't give a damn what color that fancy little badge of yours is. I don't want you shooting nobody on my property. The street's public property last time I checked. And who's gonna clean that gentleman's blood off the sand? The public? You? Well, I... I don't think so. My patrons don't want to see whatever goddamn bandit you're shooting dead today. You think I got a choice? That man helped put a bullet hole in Sheriff Henry Harper. If he walks free, that makes me a joke of a lawman. Hell, I thought you'd be a little happier to see him dead after he held that lady friend of yours at gunpoint. Her name ain't fit for your mouth, Sheriff Spade. I'm just saying, you should be a hell of a lot more grateful that I knocked that man down when I did. I don't have to be grateful for nothing. I could have handled the whole situation on my own, but no. Eddie Spade's on a campaign to see fit that my paying customers see a lifetime's worth of brain matter every time they want a goddamn drink in my saloon. We both know it ain't just a saloon. That don't make it right. You're on thin goddamn ass already. Harper! Yeah? Good to see you, Sheriff. Miss Emily? If you ain't a paying customer, I'd like you to get off the premises. What the hell is wrong with just standing outside your door? You shut your goddamn- <clears throat> Sorry, Emily. Thank you kindly, dear. I was just telling Mr. Spade- Sheriff- <laughs> Oh, silly me. I must have slipped a word or two. I was just telling Mr. Sheriff that he ought to leave these premises if he knows what's good for him. And how am I supposed to know he ain't gonna do it again? <laughs> Maybe he don't like your words, but I'm sure he likes these pistols of mine even less. Ain't that right, Sheriff? This some kind of threat? She ain't the owner, so she can't ask you to leave nicely. <laughs> like my lady friend was saying, I can't muscle you out or I'd lose my job. You know you wouldn't. I know, baby. Of <laughs> course. So if you ain't gonna listen to the owner asking politely, the second most peaceful way is with these here pistols of mine. Understood? God damn it. Fine, you'll leave. Or fine, you'll never show your ugly mug around these parts again. Fine, I'll quit bothering you here. And never shoot a man on my property again? Can't promise you that much. Between you two ladies armed to the teeth, it seems like you'll be doing all the shooting for me. <sighs> Glad we could resolve it all nicely, Mr. Sheriff. Can you stop with the- Don't take that goddamn tone with her. <laughs> I can handle myself just fine, Miss Harper. No, I thank you kindly for your concern. I'll hold my pistol just a moment. I need a hand free. You know your lipstick ain't gonna last on my hand. 
It's a check if you're washing your hands between drinks, sweetie. What I'm meaning to say is I think we got off on a hell of a wrong foot with Mr. Sheriff. I'd hate to lose a valued customer off of all of this. Like hell I'm going in there. What? Do you have some kind of problem with my establishment? I'm just not the biggest fan of going out for drinks after getting a rifle shoved up my nose. The other saloon charges double, you know. Then I think we ought to let him drink there. Oh, come on, sweetie. You don't have to like him, but he comes here a little too often. And I don't think your pride is worth that much. We ain't gonna lose the store over one sheriff with a problem. But we are gonna lose a little revenue. Besides, I don't see why we can't make amends, especially with the only gentleman keeping us out of cuffs. A ain't that right, Mr. Sheriff? You're half the town's economy. I couldn't do nothing about it if I wanted to. <laughs> and if you like my lady friend's bullets out of your head, I'd get your ass in here and get a drink before we decide against it. I ain't one to turn down a peace treaty, but you're gonna have to put the gun away first. You ain't the one negotiating here. Done. Harper, honey? Seems I've uh, forgotten the skirt that can fit a rifle in it. I'll carry it for you then. That good enough for you, Sheriff? Or are your boots too clean for an honest business? Well, there's your answer. Son of a bitch. I know you do, baby. I'll shoot him dead if you want. It ain't polite to do in front of a lady. Since when have you given a damn about being polite? <laughs> it gets better tips from the customers. <laughs> God damn. What? Something on my face, or are you just looking at me like that? Thinking about how lucky I am, that's all. Now that's mighty forward of you. <laughs> Love you too. Go check on the girls for me and tell them they can come downstairs and work at the bar for a bit if they need a break. I'll tell them the missus wanted to know how they were doing. The day I get caught with missus in front of my name is the day I die. Of course, honey. I'll be back in a bit. The hell are you, Ben? Avoiding you. Feelings mutual. What do you serve here? Liquor. It's a saloon, Sheriff. Didn't you read the sign? Hey. Sorry, forgot you were law enforcement. Y'all ain't smart enough to read. Whiskey. How do you want it? Whatever takes the longest to make. I'm not exactly one to compliment you, but it seems you've at least got taste. I don't want to have to look at your ugly mug again in a while. Say, I think you made better company than I thought. Don't get sweet on me now. I'll kick you to the goddamn curb. Nah, I just like you better without the gun. And I think I like you better when I don't have to look at you too hard. Anything but the whiskey? Nope. Take your time. That might have been the first nice thing you've ever said to me. Make it the last. Sure thing. I meant it. I meant every goddamn word I said about you. Get. That's better. I ain't ready to not be mad at you yet. Is this seat taken? Help yourself. Thank you. My dearest sheriff, if you don't mind me asking, do you happen to have a wife? No. Why the hell would you ask a thing like that? No reason. It was just the way you and the madam of this establishment were interacting. It made me wonder. I don't know if I'm shit with women or if women are shit with me. It would be quite the statement to blame an entire sex for the failures of your romantic enterprises. I wouldn't advise it in the slightest. The hell do you want from me? To pay for your drink once Miss Harper comes back around. What angle are you working with? No angle at all. Not yet at least. I don't want any of your fancy little snake oil, if that's what you mean. My business is in a far different trade, thank you very much. Just give it to me straight already. I'm a bandit, Sheriff. You're lucky I blew my only shot on your friend outside. My personal predilections for a certain side of the law have no bearings on my moral compass. If I didn't need your help, I'd be requesting to duel with you for even insinuating I would ever stoop low enough to work with, let alone fraternize with a member of the Robbins gang. Need my help? Why in the hell would you- <laughs> Patience, Sheriff. All will be revealed in time. 
Well, I ain't gonna waste my whole goddamn life listening to you weave your fancy little story. And I don't intend to take that long. This is time-sensitive business, after all. Sheriff Henry would have killed me if he saw me so much as sitting next to you. Well, I suppose then it's very good news for the both of us that he's dead. Just tell me what the hell you want with me. I'm sure you're well aware of the crimes of the Robbins gang, notably their leader, William. Sure, I know Bill Robbins. Got me here back when I was deputy. Oh my, that is quite the injury. After a bank robbery went wrong, he kidnapped the banker's wife and tied her to the train tracks till the banker forked over the money. The old sheriff and I went in to stop it, and one of his lackeys nailed me. First bullet I ever took. Well, it'll be the last from the Robbins gang if all goes well. Why the hell do you care about stopping the Robbins gang? If you ain't lying to me, what happened to honor and thieves and all that nonsense? He's terrible for business. Banks and train lines hardly have time to recover from his proclivity for explosives and gunfire. And by the time I try to enact my own heist just to put food on the table, he's left nothing. Perhaps I won't be able to convince you that I find him morally abhorrent as well, but I assume I'll be able to convince you of that much. It ain't hard to think he's a son of a bitch. He's got more casualties than most wars. Exactly. Maybe I believe you. Maybe I don't. But I want to hear more about why the hell you need me before I agree to anything. Really? What? That quickly? What, do you want me to play hard to get? No, <laughs> I'm just surprised, that's all. Your mentor took a far harder stance on crime than this. Don't make me think twice about it. He's rolling in his grave. Sheriff Henry was a hell of a man. Twice the man I'll ever be. But hell, he was twice the man most fellas are. For Bill Robbins to kill him, he needed to be something else. I see. I gotta kill him. No matter how or who I'm working with. I think the sheriff would understand. If it soothes your soul at all, I'm sure he would. Yeah. I was expecting to need to bribe you, frankly. <laughs> Ain't that easy. <laughs> Don't I know it. The hell is that? Regardless, it's a pleasure to work with you either way. Can I get a name before I shake that hand of yours? Jack Valentine. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sheriff Eddie Spade. Quite a mouthful. Might I call you Ed? Ugh. Perhaps not then. Well, Sheriff, I've recently found myself in the possession of a map leading to the hideout of Bill Robbins and his associates. Not unlike the one you dueled earlier today, if I'm correct. I'll admit it was somewhat difficult to see past all the blood. He was Robbins' gang, all right? Perfect. The gang has been hiding out in an old abandoned mining town about three days' journey southwest of this very saloon. I wasn't able to get nearly as close as I wanted, but I suspect they've been storing explosives in a good number of the buildings. So what do you need me for? Safety in numbers, first of all. I assume your deputy could be of some assistance? No way in hell. Kid's barely 18. He was just the only one willing. His old man was deputy before I was, till the Robbins gang happened to him, too. A posse, perhaps? Maybe I'll work with you, but the rest of the town don't take too kindly to strangers. It's just gonna have to be you and me. You and me, then. Well, you have certain renowned skills with gunmanship, of course. I don't doubt that'll be of use. Besides, I can only ever shoot back at these men while you have a certain power of arrest. If any of them do get away, they'll be a little less hellbent on murdering the two of us if we have no blood on our hands. And what's in it for me? You need me to find their hideout and to keep you from dying. I'd say this kind of victory should be well worth the risk. Sounds like you got yourself a deal, Valentine. Oh, please, Sheriff. Call me Jack. Don't think I will. God damn it, I hope you'd have left by now. Sorry to disappoint. I'll be paying. Well, that's a damn shame, because I didn't make the drink yet. I was standing behind the bar and counting to 30 to see how long I could pull it off, till I realized I liked standing behind the bar and counting to 30 a hell of a lot more than I liked talking to you. So I just kept at it. Funny. So you want the drink or not? I think I'll be passing on this one, thanks. Are you certain? Positive. Thanks for the roof over my head, Miss Harper. Shame I can't say it's been a pleasure. If you did, I'd shoot you dead. See you around. God, I hope not. Say, Valentine, when are we leaving for this little mission of yours? I was hoping we would leave any second now, or at least as long as it took you to pack your saddlebags and arrange for your departure. Sure thing. <whistles> <sighs> Hadn't expected you to be so ready. 
It comes to the territory. I've got provisions for a week in these saddlebags. Ma, you are prepared for anything. One last thing. Murphy! Yes, sir? I'm gonna be gone for a few days, going after the Robbins gang. What? Hold down the fort for me, all right? But, but sir! <sighs> Apologies for my compatriot. No need, sir. I'm used to him. You don't need to let him be like that. Don't let me hold you up. Only if you're certain. Good luck, deputy. Thanks, mister. <sighs> Is something the matter? I'm fine. If I'm keeping you from sleep, I'll gladly stop. I ain't gonna sleep. Why ever would you stay awake? I need your aim to be as good as I've been told if we're ever gonna survive this gunfight. Like hell, I'm leaving myself vulnerable around you. I, I beg your pardon? You know what I mean. Maybe I don't have much, but I don't like the thought of you going through my pockets. What sensible reason do I have to do such a thing? You're a bandit. You can't get any good jobs, like you said. What's stopping you from taking one now? <laughs> if anything, you don't need to worry about me mugging you until after our success. It'd be terribly foolish of me to lose your trust now, especially since I need you on this little journey of ours. Fine, then. I don't have to trust you. I'm not making you trust me. Good. Whatever you're most comfortable with, my dear Sheriff. And cut that out, too. Cut what out? Acting like we're friends. Like we're friendly. Oh, calling you dear and the like? No, this is how I talk to all of my comrades who I intend to rob in their sleep, losing their trust right before I need them to assist me. Shut the hell up. <laughs> As you wish. Ugh. Well, do you want me to keep you awake or not? How the hell does anyone put up with you? They don't. No wife or kids? Thought you had to worry about putting food on the table. My horse and I are all the family I need, thank you very much. Huh. What on earth is that supposed to mean? What the hell are you accusing me of now? I hardly think any unmarried man has a right to criticize another man for being unmarried. Besides, I'd argue my line of work is significantly more dangerous than yours. We're on opposite sides of the same type of work, Valentine. That don't count as an excuse. Fine, then. I'm terrible with women and I hate children. My horse and I get along and therefore I keep her around. There's nothing more complicated than that. I'm sure there's nothing more complicated than that for you, either. Of course. I sense you wouldn't mind shifting the subject. The hell is that supposed to- No need to get defensive. I'm not being defensive. Of course not. I was just wondering if I could possibly take some time for myself to sleep. After all, if you're going to be staying awake, I'd hate for such a thing to go to waste. I trust you not to arrest me. Right. Good night, then. Enjoy taking every single shift out of sheer stubbornness. Hey. <laughs> this won't be fun for me either, you know. I'll be the one dragging you in the direction of a mining town for the next two days. God damn it, Valentine. I'm sick to hell of you. I've done nothing wrong, Sheriff. <sighs> Don't take that tone. Fine. I'll sleep. I'm glad to hear it. Great. Wonderful. Good night, Ed. Yeah, wonderful. Let her not. <sighs> uh. Are you always this terrible a bedmate? I don't know. I don't get goddamn reviews. At least try to get comfortable. You think I like sleeping on rocks? Do you want me to try the harmonica again? You don't want me to waste any ammo on that godforsaken metal box. A simple no would suffice. Fine. No. Much better. Would you rather I sing you to sleep? Regale you with my many misdeeds? Jack of Valentine, you were gonna kill me dead. I should hope not. You should know what the hell I mean. Well, if silence isn't doing you any good, I might as well say something. What would you say to swapping stories? <laughs> like hell, I'm gonna swap stories with you. I've proven to be nothing but amicable, Sheriff. Too friendly. We're at a truce. There's nothing to do but fraternize. I see no harm in indulging in one another's company. Well, I do. I can list a dozen sheriffs right now that'd shoot me dead on the spot for sitting at the same campfire as you. 
There's no need to act as if they're here, Eddie. <sighs> Sheriff Henry would kill me. Sheriff Henry would understand. If he had a head on his shoulders, that is. Besides, there's no harm in building a relationship between comrades. What? I'd hate to charge into battle with a near stranger. I would much rather you and I get to know one another now. What are you really trying to say? You look like the kind of gentleman I'd like to get to know better. Perhaps if we had met under kinder circumstances, I would have bought you a drink in earnest. Oh. Oh? <clears throat> look, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. And I'm sure as hell not sleeping anytime soon. What do you want to know? Tell me about yourself, Sheriff. Hell of a loaded question. Well, then tell me what you do on a regular day. Huh. I'm gonna need a moment to think about that. You're not that on schedule, are you? <sighs> Give me a goddamn second. <laughs> I'm not rushing you. You got all on that. Well, I usually get up around dawn every morning. Ugh. I could never. Then it's a good damn thing you've kept me up late tonight. I'm gonna sleep like a baby till you drag me onto my horse tomorrow. Usually I'm up that early because Deputy Murphy likes to get to the office early, and he's got chickens to feed. I don't like leaving him alone at the sheriff's station for long, so I get in pretty early too. And this Deputy Murphy, do the two of you get along well? About as well as me and the old sheriff did. I see. Murphy's a good kid. Too young for the job he's in. I would have taken him with us, but hell, I'm of the opinion that you ought to be at least 20 when you get shot for the first time. Bit of a low bar, isn't it? I don't know. When was your first? Hmm. <laughs> don't take all night. I wanted to think you were just getting impatient with me. Shut the hell up. Why, Sheriff, I thought you wanted to hear my answer. God damn it, you know what I mean. <laughs> Perhaps so. I'm afraid it isn't the most heroic story in the world. Come on, it can't be that bad. Promise me you won't laugh. You know I can't do that. Then promise me you'll try your best. I prefer to show the world both an upstanding and an honest face, though sometimes the two of them do not necessarily like to coexist. Just tell me. You want us to work well together, right? Of course. That I'm gonna need enough dirt on you to trust you. <sighs> Fine. So, how'd you get shot? I broke into a farmer's coop to steal a chicken without knowing his daughter tended to him late at night. She wasn't in there at the time, but her father assumed I was a secret paramour of hers. You're kidding me. He saw me sneaking in and shot on sight. <laughs> Eddie, you promised! I didn't promise nothing! You know better than to ask a man not to laugh at that. I was terribly injured, you cad. What, twenty years ago? Uh, fifteen, if it matters at all to you. Sure. I'm beginning to think I ought to have conscripted a different sheriff. I can't be that bad, can I? Well... Don't finish that sentence. How'd you get away from the farmer? I had enough knowledge of first aid to save my life, though not enough to leave me unmarred by the occasion. Here. <sighs> These damned buttons. Here. Oh, but... <laughs> Quite forward to you, sheriff. Don't think too hard about it. How far down is it? Quite a ways. Is it? Yes, the <clears throat> uh, one your finger's on. This ain't half bad. It's barely raised. You you have very cold hands, Eddie. Want me to quit looking at the scar or not? Ah, oh, no. What? <clears throat> no, no, go ahead. Slip, slip of the tongue, my apologies. That had to have hurt like hell. It's nothing I couldn't survive. Still, didn't make it fun. You know, at least I got a somewhat entertaining story out of it. Sorry for laughing. There's no need to be. I can laugh now. Seventeen's a bit young for something like that, is all. Younger than Murphy, even. Well, then that's all the reason to keep him from being shot until he's at least twenty. Off to bed already? <sighs> I thought the story of my first experience with life-threatening agony would be enough to entertain you. Clearly not. <clears throat> Don't make fun of me. I'm only returning the favor, my dear Sheriff. Whatever. It's a good night not to sleep through. I thought this was supposed to be some kind of important time to get rest. I'm not saying it isn't. It's just rather beautiful tonight. What? 
Oh, even a sheriff must have time in his day to appreciate the wonders of the natural world. The hell kind of sheriff do you think I am? What, is your manhood getting in the way of looking at the night sky and taking a moment to let your thoughts wander? I just don't care too much for pretty things, that's all. Why not? Sheriff Henry would have killed me for it. Can you give me one good reason that has nothing to do with that man? I've heard his name a dozen times today, and frankly, I'm of the opinion that we ought to leave the dead buried. I just don't see what someone like you sees in it. Someone like me. You know, someone who can look up there and see something worth looking at. Perhaps you can just see the stars better from out here. There's a certain freedom to it, I think. There aren't any lamps and streetlights to dull the stars, just as there aren't any laws and sheriffs to force me to tamper my way of living to fit the rules of a society I do not exist within. Can you say it in half the words? I think I'm falling asleep. Despite your best effort, Sheriff, it seems I have somehow found a way to enjoy your company. Shut up. <laughs> Long story short, I can't tell you exactly why I'm happier out here. The stars are part of it, of course. It's a view like no other. I'd even argue that the air tastes cleaner out here, though that might just be my perception. I don't think there's anywhere in the world like this. This, right here? A campfire, a clear sky, a cool desert night, more stars than you could ever dream of counting. It's heaven, Sheriff. It almost feels like falling in love. Oh, and how often do you do that to know what it feels like? <laughs> Not often. Only once or twice, though I don't think I'd ever forget the sensation. How about you, Ed? I don't think so. You ought to try it sometime. It's rather nice. What's it like? Like a campfire, a clear sky, a cool desert night stars than you could ever dream of counting. Eddie? <laughs> well then, good night, my dear sheriff. Until morning. Is that it, or has it just been too long since I wet my whistle? Oh, hush, you drank most of the water anyway. Whatever. Besides, as far as I'm concerned, not-so-abandoned abandoned mining towns don't just spring out of the desert fully formed when your throat's a little dry. I think we found the right spot. That's a hell of a town for a gang of 15 bandits. You smell that, Sheriff? Tell me that ain't gunpowder. And all of the finest homemade explosives a man could dream of getting his hands on, I'm afraid. God damn it. What do you think they're gonna do with it all? I'm unsure, but with William Robbins' track record of violence in the past, I don't know how much I'd like to be around to find out. With the scale of arsenal, I'd put my money on a bank safe or a train track. I just hope to God they're empty. I assure you, they won't be. Well, shit. Are we alright, leaving the horse tied up out here? Once it all goes off, the blast radius should be far away from here. Besides, with a loose knot like that, they should have hardly any trouble getting away. The hell do you mean, once it goes off? The fastest way to get rid of a large pile of explosives is... Well, to get rid of a large pile of explosives. Can you wait until now to tell me this? What did you think we were doing? I thought we'd just shoot at him and tie up the rest. Oh, save your bullets, dear Sheriff. Bill Robbins is far too accomplished a gunman for you to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Someone ought to have told Sheriff Henry that. Well, you aren't Sheriff Henry, are you? I don't doubt you could handle the threat, but lacking you how you are, I'd prefer not to risk anything. And how's that? Alive. So? Are you backing out yet or not? I'm still in under one condition. This is a little late for conditions, Sheriff. I get to put a bullet between Bill Robbins' eyes. You know I can't promise that. It's gotta be me. When the Sheriff went, the last thing he made me promise was that if he wasn't mad enough to kill Robbins, I had to be. That hardly has anything to do with the- It's just what I gotta do, Valentine. If I go home with Robin still alive, I'll be a goddamn laughing stock. Of course. Of course. Are you ready now? Ready as I'll ever be. And your self-image isn't threatened by my plan of sneaking around and taking out the majority of the gang covertly? I'll deal with it. 
That's what I like to hear. Come on now. You know, Bill Robbins was a sheriff himself once. Now ain't the time to be pulling my leg. I'm not. He was a sheriff a day's ride east of here. I grew up in a town nearby, and all I ever heard about was how he could kill outlaws like a good hunting dog kills rabbits. It was all anyone could talk about when he and his deputies decided they'd be paid a little more and worry about legality a little less if they switched sides of the law. What kind of rat bastard just abandons his post like that? Our careers aren't too different. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm serious. Sheriff, what's stopping you from killing me right this instant and collecting the $200 I'm wanted for? First of all, I need you alive. And second of all, I've got some basic common decency. And what's stopping me from doing the same to you? That's different. People like you and I are entirely free when we're out of the public eye. Maybe you have some social pressures bearing down on you, but the fact of the matter is that the law is little more than a whisper for the both of us. You don't shoot every outlaw you see because you deem yourself morally decent. I don't tie young women to train tracks because I deem myself morally decent. I don't steal from people to live. That's the goddamn difference. And yet you're paid in taxes. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Whatever you say, Sheriff. I said shut the hell up. We're getting close. I think we got too much dynamite. Think the boss is gonna kill us? No, he'll just make us use it all. No way I'm lugging all that out to the railroad. My goddamn horse is gonna break in half. It looks like we've got ourselves in one bitch of an unsatisfactory situation. God damn. You too. Yes, yeah, Sheriff. Ah! Still Sheriff? Shh. <laughs> Where the hell did all this dynamite come from? You here brought too much last time we went out. That true? I swear on my ma's grave, Sheriff. Well, we both bought too much, Sheriff. I promise. It was both of us. I promise. It was both of us. Shut the hell up. I swear, sir. We went out the other day. You sent us to go together so we'd have backup when we haggled the cashier to give it to us free. I don't think I particularly remember doing that. Charlie, you remember going with him? No, Sheriff. Then I guess that settles it. I've got a family, Sheriff. You can't. <laughs> Get your goddamn hand off my mouth. Do you want to end up like him? <laughs> got a family. That's something else, Charlie. Nobody's got a family till they're looking down the barrel of a Winchester. I think he might have had a kid or something. By my account, he ain't seen that kid in years. Better without him anyway. Right, Sheriff. Now get his ugly mug out of my sight. I never want to have to look at that rat bastard ever again. Of course. This is so much easier than firing them. Let me at him. Do you have a death wish? <laughs> that was my opening. Perhaps it was your opening, but it wasn't ours. I'm sure you don't want to leave that town of yours without a sheriff again. He's got to be dead by the time I'm out of here. He will be. But if your image is so much more important to you than stealth or strategy, I promise he won't be leaving this world without taking you with him. Are you ready for my plan or not? <sighs> it better be a damn good one. We wait for that outlaw to return. Then we cause some sort of distraction over here. Starting a fire and running for our lives ought to do nicely. This will likely draw away enough of them to be picked off or turned into local law enforcement. Do with Robins as you wish, but once we manage the majority of the gang, we're setting all the fuses we need to get rid of the explosives and get in the way. And where the hell are we turning them into? There's a town not too far off from this one with the holding cells to manage the majority of the gang. I'll be splitting the reward money with you if you don't mind. You may have a paycheck, but I do not. Right. You want to start going after the gang members one by one? I like the fuses. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Why wouldn't that be? Just... Just don't die, alright? Was that concern I heard in your voice? Don't think too much about it. It'll be noted. I promise to stay safe if you will. Yeah, I will. Can't leave my town without a sheriff. Of course. I'll see you on the other side, Eddie. See you then. In one piece, you hear? Most certainly. Just wait for the explosion and keep your guns steady when they start running. You've got this. Make Sheriff Henry proud. You smell something funny. <laughs>
finally quit being nose blind to your shirt? I told you, you look like a goddamn washing rag. I ain't being funny. This ain't a trick, is it? I'm serious. God damn! Go, go! Can't argue with you there, Parker. What the hell are you boys doing? Don't put that fire out! How the hell did I teach those slimy rat bastards how to weave? You there, go put it out! I don't think I can stop it, Sheriff. Out it, sir! They ain't even staying behind long enough to shoot. I knew what they said about all among thieves, but god damn, you expect a gang to have a little loyalty. Damn it! You there, go after it! You quit running! You dirty, rotten cowards! You get your sorry asses back here! They can't get a shot on the Hell, I don't think I've even got to worry about revenge if they keep this up. All I've got to focus on is Robbins. Looks like I'm gonna have to take care of this myself. Shit. Come out and face me like a man, damn it! Thought the coward who's been sneaking around this here town would have the guts to look me in the eye while I killed him. I might even give you a shot back at me if you man the hell up and get out here already. <sighs> Thought that would work well enough. Looks like I almost missed you. Hell, I've got a bullet left. Might as well finish the job. I'd say it's what you deserve. Eddie, are you alright? He ain't dead, is he? We hardly have any time to worry about that. You're, you're bleeding terribly. Did you kill him? Eddie, just please let me help you. God damn it, did you kill him? I, I think so. <sighs> shh, shh, keep breathing. They can't ever find out you shot him, you hear? Of course, dear. You think you can stand up? I, I think I saw medical supplies in one of the buildings. <sighs> I'll carry you if I have to. Why aren't you running yet? Oh, that's quite a silly thing to ask about at a time like this. You did it. You ought to... What must I do? Eddie, please. I... Uh, no, no, now is not the time. I'll take care of you. Whatever I need to do. This episode was performed by the following people. Ray F. as Eddie Spade. Ellis G. as The Doctor, Jeanette C. as Harper, Abba K. as Emily, Even S. as Jack Valentine, Anissa Danny C. as Murphy, Kit A. as Robbins, Lily F. as Goon 2, Lauren T. as Goons 1, 3, and 4, and Anne C. as Goon 5. At the Campfire by Ellis G. is used with permission from its original writer. All right, let's go to them. This episode was made possible by our Elevator Pitch editors, AJR and Ray F. It was written by Anne C. and produced by Ray F. If you liked this episode, please consider following us on Twitter and TikTok at Elevator Pitch P. For show updates and a chance to interact with the cast and crew, please also consider joining our Discord server. If you are willing and able, please consider donating to us on Ko-Fi at Elevator Pitch Podcast. Elevator Pitch is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thank you for listening.